Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out this pair of boots that would have been made back in the mid 1800s. Now, full disclosure, these are very authentic replica boots of what would have been made back then. They are not actually from the mid 1800s. Now, the gentleman that sent these to us does a lot of very authentic reenactments from that period, so they have seen a lot of wear as you can see. Now, what we're gonna do is take these boots completely apart, clean them off, rebuild them in exactly the same way that they would have been done back in the day. Now, without further ado, let's get to this pair of boots. All right, so you can see that these are coming apart at the upper. Um, these boots were very simple in construction. It was basically just two pieces. Um, in this case, the tongue was actually separate, but it was just the quarters and the vamps, one piece. There's no back seam. These things were simple to make back then, and these were blake stitched. Uh, sometimes they were pegged, oftentimes they were stitched. Obviously the stitch were more reliable than the pegs. A lot of square cut nails in these things. These soles are completely come undone. And this was a common thing back then because glue back then was not nearly what it is today. And a lot of the glue was plant-based and um, it was basically used just to hold it in place while you stitched it. It wasn't one of these like a cement constructed shoe today that's supposed to last you for the life of the shoe. All right, so now that we've got the outsole off, this is the midsole, and uh, it is actually held on by wood pegs, uh, where the outsole was then Blake stitched all the way through. Um, I don't think, because of what this guy does, and they walk a lot, I'm not gonna uh, replace the insole, because it's, it's really, really molded, molded to his foot, and I don't really want to uh, him to have to break in a new pair of shoes. So we're gonna leave that one, because I glance inside, it looks like it's in pretty good shape, and this is the first resole, Blake Stitch. You can't do it too many times, but you can do it this. All right, now this pattern is from the 1850s and 60s. Uh, it was a civilian style. You would have seen um, different construction between something that was government issued, like for instance, during the war, and then something that was bought privately. Um, I've seen a lot of these over the years, and this is actually very authentic. There's a lot of like cheap reproductions out there, but this one is pretty good. All right, I'm not replacing the insole, but I do have to remove the insole so that we can get all this stitched back. Now, some of the details in this are that the uppers, all the pieces are hand stitched and they're actually hand stitched using different stitches. Um, back stitches, just like a running stitch and a whip stitch. Now, this is 1850s, 1860s. Uh, sewing machines were in use. However, it was at that time when manufacturers, and this is completely uh, taken off of an original boot, um, some manufacturers were still kind of pushed back against machines like that and still contracted uh, people to hand stitch things. So now it's time to get this pair cleaned up. Now when I say pair, it really is like Heath mentioned, two pieces that are literally stitched together and that's it. Now I wanna keep the authenticity of this leather and I don't wanna ruin it by putting saddle soap on there and matting this leather down. So I'm actually going to use uh, suede shampoo and that will help clean these off and still keep that matted leather uh, that especially shows up on the toe portion. 
Okay, first thing we wanna do is just try to brush this off. I'm gonna use a suede brush here and just try to remove any of this excess dirt and dust that's just kind of sitting on top. All right, now, again, like I said, I'm gonna use a little suede cleaner here. I've already got my bowl of water and I'm just gonna pour a little bit of the shampoo in there. Then take my little brush, get that all nice and sudsed up. And then I'm just gonna scrub these and try to get these as clean as possible. Now I'm just taking a towel or paper towels in this case and just drying them off a little bit. Okay, we're done cleaning these off and now we're just going to let them air dry. Uh, once they do that, then we'll be ready to go and we can get back to restitching these, resoling these and wrapping these up. But before I do that, let me tell you a quick story because I think you might enjoy this one. Okay, so a few years ago, Heath was doing a uh, living history down at the Battle of Chickamauga in Georgia. Uh, it was a battle that occurred during the American Civil War, I believe 1863. And basically it was at, the, at this National State Park. And what they do is they'll have uh, authentic reenactors come in and they'll just you know, camp out, do things like that so that when people come to visit the, uh, the site, it kind of gives them, it brings history to life because they can actually see soldiers uh, as they would have seen back in the day. So Heath was always loved doing that sort of thing. And uh, he had always asked me, he's like, hey, please come with me on one of these. I promise you'll enjoy it. Look, I love history, uh, I love camping out, it's fun stuff, but this is like legit hardcore stuff. Um, and everything is from that period. So it's not, you know, you're not throwing up your nice sleeping bag and tent. It's, it's totally different. Well, he set me up with the uniform and uh, we had to march around throughout the day around the, the state park, national park, can't remember. And uh, so people could see all these troops marching around. Well, he gave me a pair of these brogans, kind of like the ones we're working on today, and they belonged to someone else. So as you guys know, if you have leather shoes, you know, your, it molds to your foot, which is what makes them so comfortable once they break in. These didn't fit my feet. They fit whoever this guy was. And uh, man, I had to wear these things. I was marching around with them. And, and again, I'm not used to this stuff. This was completely new to me. So I'm wearing them around, we're marching for miles. I, my foot or my feet had so many blisters on them. They were killing me. I was literally in pain. I was like that guy that had to like hop out of ranks and just lay there on the ground dying because my feet hurt so bad. And uh, you know, it got so bad at one point, I literally was taking grass and I was shoving the grass down into the boot just so my skin and the, the leather wouldn't, the friction, you know, that's how bad it got. It was pretty pathetic. So um, anyways, well, Heath was kind enough to say, you know what, I drug him down here. I'll, I'll go along with it. And uh, we kind of ditched that place and spent like the, you know, the rest of the day uh, around the Chattanooga, Tennessee area, like, you know, eating at restaurants and going to Cabela's and stuff like that. So, yeah, anyways, I did it. I can check that off my list. I can say I did a reenactment. Probably never going to do it again, but uh, I have a lot of admiration now for those guys back then that wore these boots and had to march hundreds of miles throughout the war. Insane, so much respect. All right, so we're gonna stitch these uppers back together. Now at the time they didn't have obviously synthetic polyesters and nylons and stuff like that, rayon. They used linen, cotton, silk, um, hemp. And so we're gonna use a linen thread and uh, wax this through some shoemaker's wax, which is basically just like some uh, beeswax, some tallow, and you know, 
conglomerates of stuff. And then we'll stitch these back using a back stitch. Yes. And there we go. Dirty shoes, brand new stitches, already dirty. All right, insoles back in, got these little one ounce tiny, tiny tacks just to hold it in place. I didn't replace the insole, I told you before, it's molded to his foot, I don't want to mess with that, so left it in place, and we're gonna put the shank back in. Now, glue back in the day, I said earlier, some of their glue was kind of vegetable based, you know, sometimes made up like potatoes and stuff, and it was not hardcore heavy stuff. Normally when I put a shank in, I'm using contact cement. That's modern day contact cement because I don't want it to move at all. But I could cheat, but I don't want to. So I'm going to use rubber cement because it's probably the closest thing that we have to what they would have used back then just to hold it in place. All right, so we've got glue on, shank in, shank cover. We went ahead and dyed our insole black, glue on it, the stick this thing. And then we're gonna hold it on with the wood pegs. All right, so we're gonna insole stitch these just like they would have been done back then. Now, a lot of people are like, well, was that around at the time? Yes, actually it was. The Blake stitch process uh, actually predates the Goodyear welted machine process, and it really didn't get its start, like mass produced until the Civil War. That's actually kind of what helped him boost it. Now, Blake actually came up with it. He sold his patent to McKay, so that's why a lot of people call it a McKay stitch or a Blake McKay stitch or just a Blake stitch. All right, so we're gonna stick this heel, but I don't wanna bore y'all. We got three pieces here. Instead of watching glue dry, we're just gonna stick it and then you'll catch me once they're all stacked up on top of each other. All right, so we have put the heel on. This is the top lift. It was all leather back then. Now, if you remember, when we first started taking these apart, there were some hobnails on there. Those hobnails were not original. The heels had been redone and those hobnails had been put on. Now, the way that most heels were done back then were with iron nails. And so that's what we're gonna do. Now, some people are wondering like, well, isn't that gonna wear down? 
think about it, back then they didn't have asphalt roads. Everything was dirt, everything was grass. So we, they don't put the wear and tear on them like we do today. All right, so we have dyed the edge. Now, the reason we didn't use the typical ink that we normally use on a modern day shoe is because it is a modern burnishing ink. Uh, what would have been used at the time would just have been uh, some recipe for dye. Maybe it was like an Iron Morton dye. And then we will go over it with wax and use old school hand tools to burnish and, and really melt that into the leather. So that's what we'll do now. <coughs> Okay guys, now what I did to the uppers was I just used some of the uh, Saphir Renovateur sprayed for suede. It has a lot of oils and conditioning elements in it as well as black pigment. And that's what I wanted to use on this pair of boots. Uh, the guy did not want us putting anything on them that's you know thick coated or anything, but I wanted to put color back into this. So again, that's what, that's what I used. I didn't show it because you have to be in a well ventilated area. So I decided to just take it outside, spray these down real quick, and then just let you guys know what we did. So anyways, I think they turned out looking great on the uppers and uh, it was the perfect product to use for this pair of boots. Okay, this replica pair of uh, 19th century shoes or boots, should I say, has been complete. Now, just a quick reminder, uh, Black Friday will be coming up in the next week or two for us. We're launching a little early, so guys, make sure you are checking out potterandsons.com. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we'll have a, most of our stuff on that website on sale. This is always the biggest sale of the year, so if you're wanting to get anything for your shoes, boots, leather goods, whatever it may be, definitely make sure you're signing up for our email list or following us on social media because we will let you know. Okay. Tell us a little bit about this pair of, uh, of boots. All right, so as we said earlier, this was a 1850s, 1860s pattern of civilian shoe. Probably I'd say kind of like that middle class style of shoe. And they're very simple. I'm, I was just surprised at how the patterns were so simple back then compared to today. Yeah. It was really two to three pieces and just stitched together, pegged, uh, Blake stitched, because remember we did say that the machines were around at that time. That's when they were uh, started and they really started to become uh, popular during the war because they needed a lot of bulk um, shoes being produced. So we put it back as close to the way it would have been done back then. Uh, with the hills, we did say that those hobnails on the hills, those were added by the guy who sent them in. And so we wanted to put them back the way that they originally were, which was usually iron nails going around the outside. So, yeah. Um, and then on the uppers, um, we wanted, we didn't want to mess with the, the leather uppers too much. Uh, the gentleman that sent these in to us uh, did not want to put anything coating, should I say, onto the leather. So all I did was just, again, sprayed it with some Saphir Renovateur spray for suede, uh, and that put the color back into it. It also put a lot of conditioning oils into that leather uh, to help hydrate it. Now, one of the things that you mentioned, just uh, we can throw out to you guys, what did back then you'd mentioned that in order to uh, protect those boots, what, what would folks put on there? You mentioned like even bacon grease or something. Well, right. it depends on if you, what you were buying in a store versus like if you were in the war and you were out in the field, 
shoes were precious um, commodities. I mean, you didn't want your shoes to wear out and you go barefoot. So they had to make those things last. And I've heard stories and diaries where guys would even use like bacon grease uh, to rub on their shoes. Not sure how good that is for the longevity of it, but it would it would help repel some of the water. Yeah. Uh, but they they these, they had a lot of stuff back then that uh, we think are all modern. But they had stuff back then to keep leather uh, supple and lasting longer. We did actually restitch the uppers. Yes, yes, because yes, a lot of those stitches on the sides were busted, so we um, used some wax uh, linen thread and restitched all the uppers. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So it was a fun one. I hope you enjoyed, again, another historical boot. And uh, hopefully got a lot more coming down the pike. So yep. again, thanks for joining us. Until next time, y'all have a good one.